When I was a kid, I had to mow the lawn. My dad made me mow the lawn every weekend. So I did this for about 10 years. This was not fun. This was the kind of thing where you're pushing the mower along and it could hit a rock, which would then come fly up and sometimes hit you. It was the kind of thing where you had to refill the gas tank with very, very stinky gasoline on a regular basis. And because I grew up in the South and I'm mowing Southern lawns, they were humid, which means the grass was heavy and stinky. And it was just a real big pain. This was the bane of my existence for a long time. I have been reading Yuval Noah Harari's Homo Deus. And what I've learned from this book is that it's not my dad's fault that I had to mow the lawn. The blame lies with aristocrats in the Middle Ages from France and England. So let's jump in to how this unfolded and why they're at fault. The reason these Middle Age aristocrats made my life difficult was because they were concerned with keeping up with the Joneses. They were aristocrats, so they were richer and had more status than most everyone else in their respective communities. However, the way human nature is, is that we don't really compare ourselves against people who we consider ourselves above. We compare ourselves against our peers, and we want to feel better about our status in relation to them. And that's what led the lawns. They were the first group to do this. This was kind of a new thing. When we lived in caves, or when it was the time of the pharaohs and pyramids, at no point were people growing green grass outside of their doorways. They didn't care. But aristocrats, they had time and energy to care about this stuff. And what happened was that having a lawn became a status symbol. Now, the thing about a lawn is that it's useless. It doesn't serve a function that has any utility to it. It doesn't feed grazing animals. It's not a garden that can grow crops that would feed your family or the community. It's there strictly for aesthetic purposes. It's a bunch of grass that just requires maintenance. But the maintenance and care of the lawn is really the key idea here. It required a staff to maintain it. Time and energy of lots of people to make sure that it looked good and was giving the right aesthetic to represent you to the rest of your community. Now, if you have the money to spend on all of these people to maintain your lawn, well, it signals that you're doing well. And that was how you display status amongst your peers. If you can blow money on having this big, huge lawn, you're all set. You look like you've made it. So let's move on to the next session, which is now that we know this, what do you do about it? So this group of people eons ago are responsible for why Americans are crazy about lawns. Lawns are a big deal, especially in the suburbs. This really reaches its peak usually around Christmas time when people go beyond their lawns into Christmas decorations and sometimes have friendly neighborhood competitions around who can have the biggest and most extravagant decorated lawn. Well, I'm not mad at these aristocrats for complicating my life and making me spend that much of my childhood doing that. But my takeaway from this is that if you live in the United States, especially in an area where it's hard to grow green grass, maybe think about if this is a game you wanna play. Do you care that much? And do you think that having a great lawn, it's really serving you in that way? Think about the negatives of growing grass where it's difficult to do so. For example, if you live in Arizona or Nevada, it's not normal to grow that type of plant in that region. So if you do so, it's gonna be real burdensome. It's gonna take a lot of your time for a benefit that to you might be a bit nebulous. It might also turn out that there's other things that are more interesting. Maybe you could put a Japanese rock garden or some sort of structure or art or anything you wanna put there. I mean, hell, you could put a basketball court or a badminton court or whatever you wanted, as long as it was giving you some utility and value from that beyond just something to look at. So what I want you to take from this is that there are other decisions in your life where the default, which is to have a lawn, that may be influenced by someone else who had completely different priorities than you did. And a long, long, long time ago. Think about, is that serving you? And is that valuable? And you might find that with things beyond the lawn in your life, it's time to take a new approach to that decision. All right, I wanna go take a shower. Peace.